Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Past, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this podcast project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the past, with our guest, Michael Good. Welcome. Oh, good to be here. Thank you for coming to far west Austin. Yeah, I hadn't, it was kind of cool. It was uh, I haven't been out here yet at all. Yeah. I took like a Southwest Parkway and I was like instantly in the country. Oh, I, like, yeah. Driving past... Uh, I don't know, it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not interesting, but it was cool. <laughs> well, I, I have a way that I like to break the ice. And so what I like to ask is for you to pick one word to describe your past. Oh. Uh, Comedy-wise or, or overall? W- wide open. Oh, one word to describe my past. Um, well, history. It's, uh, I don't know, I'm looking. <laughs> Technically, looking that, is, that is. <laughs> well, I had... Uh, D- Duncan Carson a few weeks back, and and he said that <laughs> something was like that was that was his word. Yeah, really yeah so you know it's really it's up to you. There's yeah. no judgment here. Yeah, Michael, where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Iowa, Iowa, uh, central Iowa. farm yeah. state. Yeah, I grew up on a caucus farm. central right now. I know. Yeah, tomorrow night it's uh it's gonna be a big deal. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Iowa is well. I actually do know one comic from Iowa. Oh yeah, Brooks Whelan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he went to, he got an engineering degree. I mean, I don't know him, but I only know of one other comic from, from Iowa, so now I know two. This is mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah, there you go. And me, me and Brooks Whelan, not, <laughs> hey, not on good. the same level <laughs> quite yet. <laughs> Maybe one day, one yeah. day. Uh, how did you make your way down to Austin? Um, I knew I wanted to move. Um, I moved to the capital of, the, uh, of Iowa, like Des Moines, to okay. like, start comedy. So I did it there for like nine or ten months. But I, I moved there knowing that I wanted to go somewhere bigger pretty quickly. And uh, it was between Chicago and here. And that last winter I was there, it was just brutally cold. Like, yeah. It would be like 20 below. And uh, the thought of having to like wait for the train in Chicago right. where it's like the lake effect. I was like, I'll just, I'd rather move to paradise for a couple of years. So. Sure. Yeah. I had to tell jokes. So. Who wouldn't? Yeah. So you knew when you were back home that you wanted to start comedy. And yeah. you had already started that process. Uh huh. Yeah. What were some of your your factors for going into comedy? Like, what what were your favorite shows, or is there somebody that you were watching? Um, growing up, I didn't I didn't watch a lot of stand up comedy like growing up, but uh, my family, my parents always watched uh, Letterman, so I watched a lot of that. Watched a lot of Ferguson uh, in high school. And then, uh, I think like freshman year at college, my roommate put me on to like, we started watching Chappelle clips on okay. YouTube, some from his specials. And, uh, that's when I really started liking it. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is, this would be really cool. But I didn't have the balls to like tell anyone I wanted to do it for so long. For right. forever, I was like, oh, I'll, just, I'll be a screenwriter. But it's not, that was kind of like a smoke screen. Like I wanted to do stand up, but I didn't want to tell anybody I wanted to do stand up, <laughs> basically. So, so when you started stand up, did you do this? Did you do it covertly? Did you like sneak into some open mics or? Oh, yeah, I didn't invite friends. Well, uh, my senior year, I went to one mic that was, it was so bad that it took me almost a year to get the courage up to do it again. This is senior year of college. And, uh, three of my friends were like came along that time. And then I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. So yeah. yeah, I didn't, people didn't come watch me until like I was on like a show, I think for five or six months in back in Iowa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, I wanted to, I was like, I, let me get good. And then you can see, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to, it was definitely a cover. It was ner- nerve wracking yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Cause what if I was awful, you know, wow. I, I didn't want people to come and then everyone knew I went for it and missed. <laughs> so. Must be, must be tough starting out because who's going to tell you that you are, uh, that you're bad, that you're bad. Yeah. yeah. Cause your friends are there to support you. Well, right, yeah. What an awkward position to put them in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the last, uh, I did sure thing. What, like a week or so ago, and mm-hmm. so my uh, girlfriend's uh, coworkers came. Yeah. And beforehand, they're like, "Oh, what if he's not good?" Oh no. <laughs> so they're like, "Oh, thank God, he it went well." <laughs> <laughs> Man, it is a weird pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So I, I've heard you. You got fairly interested in it your freshman year of college, and mm-hmm. by senior year, you were doing a show or two. 
uh, senior year of college, I... I did one mic, and it took me a year Another to get the courage year to get... up, and then I okay. did it a couple times that spring, and then like the next fall, I started finally doing it where it was like at least like three times a week mm-hmm. in Iowa. And Iowa is hard. I had to drive a couple hours to do that third mic a week to like Cedar Rapids. Okay. Uh, which is where I think, I think it's where Brooks Wheeling started over there. Could be, yeah. But, I uh, mean, it's not known as the mecca of yeah, comedy, yeah, so Cedar you probably Rapids, do Iowa. have to find yeah. <laughs> where to go. Yeah. What would you say were your comedic influences? I know what you were watching, but maybe the the question is tailored towards how did you develop your style of writing or did you experiment? Mm-hmm. Are you still experimenting? Uh, oh, I still, I mean, you know, who knows like how it'll end up, but um, definitely, you know, I mean, I watched a lot of Seinfeld growing up. And so then, uh, you know, so his stand up, especially when I, when I started, it was like, I think it happens for a lot of people. Like when I first started, I was like, oh, I love Louis C.K., I love Seinfeld and I love Chappelle. And then you start doing it and then you like find out all the people who are kind of under the radar or people who are coming up mm-hmm. and uh, you start to get really. So I, I really like like Michael Che. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, people more like that. Emily Heller is really funny. People like that. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I feel like when people start, it's like, oh, it's because uh, of Seinfeld and Louis. Like it's really broad. Like everyone knows who they are. But mm-hmm. then, um, yeah. Then once again, I watched like every Conan, everyone who did a Conan spot, you know, when I first started mm-hmm. and that kind of thing so just really when i jumped into it i really you know tried to like absorb as much of it as i could i guess Mm -hmm. but yeah i want you to describe your first comedy set first comedy set yeah well (laughs) the first one was just i mean a boy the one where i had those three friends came and the one guy's got the video and i was like he could totally blackmail me with this no i actually think in hindsight i don't think it was quite as bad but, you know, you just went into it, and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And then it was so – and it's such a – I mean, until you get up there, it's such a, you know, we, it's hard to describe, the, like, mm-hmm. the adrenaline of yeah. it. And the, it's just such a different experience. And that's why you, I think everyone keeps doing it because it's almost – it's like a drug. Like, when it works, it's the best. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, starting is very hard and getting over – um. Yeah, the, just the fear <laughs> for the beginning. Yeah. So that first one, it was just awful. I don't even remember. I think I got a couple laughs, but um, like I said, it took me like 10, 11 months to even try it again. Yeah. I thought this, my perception of it was so, uh, this did not go well. <laughs> and then when I when I went back, it was still like hit and miss, but I I don't know. I think I'd prepared a lot more by that point and was just also was more ready to be like, oh, you're going to be really bad for a long time. So that was, uh Yeah. <laughs> Is that something that you just figured out on your own or were people telling you that, oh, you're going to be bad or you un- you understood that the comics road is a long one? Uh, well, I read a I mean, you know, I read a lot of books and I'd, I'd read like every article I could podcast. I mean, I was listening to okay. podcasts all the time about it and people, so you can, you can kind of start to like see the themes. I feel like when you absorb a lot of those interviews and stuff where people are like, yeah, it's just, you're going to be bad for a long time and it's, you got to deal with that mm-hmm. pretty much and work really hard people would always talk about how like the you know they talk about like Hannibal and Aziz and how all the people that do like the most sets are the ones that are like doing really well yeah so that all kind of became ingrained mm-hmm. I think from reading all that stuff but. so you were two years into comedy before you came down to Austin um a little, was... well from when I started doing it like three times a week I was a little under a year so it was like October so yeah like 11 months and then I came here um see I've been here but year almost year and a half wow i think now yeah so that's awesome it's, it's so it's like four and a half years from that from that disastrous yeah. uh debut but yeah but yeah, yeah. you've recovered yeah <laughs> finally it yeah. took a long it took a long time <laughs> <laughs> um let's see is there anything else you want to know because i think what i'd like to do is talk about since you are you're in austin how long You've, uh, a year so it was November, so I guess almost, yeah, almost a year, right. well, not even that, a year and a quarter, I guess, or something like that, yeah. Hmm, do I reserve that for the next episode, or, or start going in? Let's, let's go in. Okay. Tell me about your first show in Austin. First show. Oh, uh, the first time I ever, did, have you ever been to Cherrywood, the open mic there on Tuesday nights? not. The, uh, the first time I did it there, uh, it's outside, it's, I mean, it's, as far as, like, um, listening to your set the next day, and, like, getting good feedback on if jokes are good. It's, yeah. it's a very hard place because it's outside. Okay. Sound. You can have good sets there, certainly, but yeah. it's a very tough. It's almost more of a hangout. Like, it's everyone goes. So it's like fun to hang out with all your friends. 
but the uh, first time I remember actually I texted one of my best friends from back in Des Moines. I was like, I feel like I never like transferred high schools growing up, but I feel like this is what it was like because I was sitting there and I was like, I know how all this works. Like I can see mm-hmm. the comics, I can see the list. I was like, but I don't know who anyone is. Yeah. Like I'm ter- I'm sitting in the corner terrified. Uh, but yeah, the first time just got up like 28th, no one there. And I was like, oh, this is a whole, <laughs> it was such a scary first set. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is not going to go. So this is going to take a little while. <laughs> you had brutal first, first experiences. It's yeah. that like, sound well, like... and then in hindsight now, I'm like, oh, that's just like how most of your, a lot of sets are going to be. Cause it's not yeah. Iowa too. There was, you know, when I was there, the crowds were pretty good because it's not a ton of options mm-hmm. for other stuff. And there it wasn't like a second mic to go to. So all the comics would, would stay and like watch. Yeah. Um, which is different here. Cause there's so many mics and so many shows people are running all over the place. So, yeah. uh, I was so I wasn't used to like how small crowds would be too. You mm. could just be going up to like two people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of a shock, but Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was like when you listen to a recording, I still think when I listen to recordings from Cherrywood sometimes, it sounds like uh you know, like on ghost hunter shows when they're like trying to oh. hear yeah. if it's a the ghost and it's like the tiniest <laughs> sound, yeah. Uh and so I'll just listen up like, do they chuckle? Was that was that a laugh? Was that I don't like the same scrutiny I have to apply to like my sets. Like, I think someone was laughing there. So is that important that you, oh, so on a recording, is that important that you're hearing that feedback versus I'm going to critique my own delivery or my own performance? Um, how do you work through that? Uh, well, listening, listening to your sets are not fun because like no one likes to hear their own yeah. voice. And, um, sometimes, especially sometimes like Cherry was one where, like, you'll remember, you'll be like, oh, people were smiling. Like, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. And then you listen to the recording, and it sounds like there's nothing. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, were they smiling? I think they were smiling. Like, it's such a... <laughs> so you start doubting yourself. Yeah. I don't think anyone really likes listening to their own sets, but... No. It seemed, it, I think it helps so much. Um, yeah, because you can just... It's like, oh, this line hasn't worked three times. I should change it or get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of thing. And it took what took me a long time, too, uh, was I used to kind of always, like grade laughs evenly across sets. And then I think one time Danny Palumbo or somebody was like, well, you got to grade it on a curve. Like some of these rooms, you're not going to get a huge laugh, but if you get like any laugh, you know, <clears throat> that's something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when, when that, when he told me that, like that kind of clicked, I was like, Oh, duh. like, yeah, you, cause you can't, if you didn't do that, you'd feel like you were bombing every time and you get kind of discouraged. There's a weird delusion you have to mm-hmm. harbor. Like, so it's working through that transition of I've only got one option when I'm in Iowa. So I know that that room is where I'm going to be graded versus here. Yeah. Plus, different rooms. Oh, yeah. And there they'd be like, you know, 10, 15 people. There's one mic. They've been there for five years. So it'd be like 20 people at the mic. So mm-hmm. you could have. And then here it's like you can go, you can go to a show and it would be 20 people. We, but I mean, it's like that there, too. It, yeah. My first show I got on back there, I was like, oh, it's a show. Now I'll finally invite people. Uh-huh. And then I got there. I was like, oh, there's nobody here. It's because the 20 mo- comics who are usually here for the mic aren't here. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, uh-huh. I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, a show can have less of a crowd than a mic sometimes. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. <laughs> Very useful distinction. Okay. Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents the Past with our guest, Michael Good. Michael, do you want to tell us where we can find you on social media? Social media, yeah. uh, Twitter, it's um, Michael Good. uh, I like my name, but with uh, three O's. Okay. Um, Michael's A. Cool. And that's your preferred social media outlet? Yeah, I really (laughs) don't do jokes on Facebook or anything. I pretty much, Twitter's Twitter's the spot. Yeah. uh, Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, listen to part two for more information about our guest and what he's up to today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, the past, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. And be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.